Hello, I'm Perry Floyd, pastor, chaplain, here with my faithful dog, Ripley. On April 16th, I have some bad news and then some good news. Uh, as we think about my walk with God, as we walk through this COVID crisis, as we pray and ask God for protection and that he would stick his hand out and remove this plague from us. First of all, <clears throat> here's the bad news. We are an anxious nation. Did you know that anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in America? 40 million adults age 18 and older are almost 19% of the population every year. And although these anxiety disorders are treatable, almost 40% never get any treatment. And people with an anxiety disorder are three to five more times likely to go to the doctor or to be hospitalized for disorders than those who don't. It's not uncommon for someone who suffers from anxiety to also suffer from depression. In 2018, Barnes & Noble, the largest book retailer in the United States, announced a huge surge in the books about anxiety, a 25% jump in one year. One of their spokesmen said, we may be living in an anxious nation. It's a nebulous term that covers a lot of ground, but at its widest end, anxiety can arrive as a symptom of other things like panic attacks, post-traumatic stress, phobias, or OCD. Is it more prevalent in the West? The stats and the research say, actually, this kind of anxiousness is more prevalent in wealthier nations because we're not focusing on survival, but on ourselves. We tended to turn inward. The American Psychiatric Association ran a poll on 1,000 uh, residents, and they found that two-thirds of us were extremely or somewhat anxious about our health and our safety, and that was three years ago. They also noted that millennials are the most anxious generation. And then a year later, in 2018, the same poll represented anxiety had risen by 5%. So we're dealing with a nation full of people a little bit worried. Why? Well, a couple of big reasons. One is a shift in society. One study in the 1990s found that people who pursued money, looks, and status are more likely to feel anxious and depressed. Um, materialism is paramount in our culture, and it's impossible to draw a straight line between the shifts in culture and anxiety, but some are tempted to do so. And then living alone. More and more, especially our young adults, are living by themselves. And so a culture that's focused on stuff and a culture that's focused on itself is going to be anxious. And in this crisis, we're very anxious. Well, here's the good news. You know the famous verse, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Maybe you've sung that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's in the Sermon on the Mount. It's the passage where Jesus is explaining the lifestyle of anyone who chooses to follow him. And the context of Matthew 6.33 is about worrying. From Matthew 6.25 to Matthew 6.34, he says, don't worry three times. Three more times he says, why are you worrying? What does worrying do for you? Let tomorrow worry about itself. And so these 11 verses are chock full of why Disciples of Jesus should get rid of worry and anxiety. They should become expulsed from our lifestyle. And he uses two examples. He says, look at the lilies. And he says, look at the birds. And God takes care of the birds, and you're more valuable than any bird. And God takes care of the lilies. He dresses them beautifully. And if they're there, here today and gone tomorrow, how much more will he take care of you? In other words, Jesus says the number one way to deal with worry and anxiety is to focus on the faithfulness of God the Father. And we've never needed to do that more than we do now. We need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and let worry and anxiety and fear melt away. There's a story in Luke chapter 10 where Jesus uh, encounters uh, people in a home and the home is Martha and Mary's home. You remember that story? And it says in verse 40 of Luke 10, Martha was distracted 
with much serving. The word distracted there is an interesting word. It means to draw in a circle. In other words, she was doing so many things, so many things at once, so many focuses, think about this, think about this, that her mind was going like this. And so she comes to Jesus and she says, you need to tell my sister to stop listening to you and help me with all the things that need to be done. And Jesus said a fascinating thing to that follower. He said, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. You are anxious. Same word as in Matthew 6, don't worry. Same word as in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing. The word in Greek is merimnao. It means to be pulled in two directions at the same time. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Maybe I will. Maybe I shouldn't. And that's the word for worry. Did you know in a dictionary, <laughs> the third meaning of the word worry is what a dog does with a rag or a bone or a small creature. <laughs> to shake it back and forth is to worry it. And when you and I take a problem, an issue, or relationship, and we just shake it back and forth in our mind, that's worrying. And Jesus said, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. The word trouble there comes from a word that means shouting or a riot. It's used of the word crowd, loud crowds, when there's a cacophony of voices around and there's so much yelling at you, you don't really know what to do. And Jesus said, Martha, you're anxious and you're troubled about many things, but Mary has chosen one thing, the best thing. And I'm going to ask today that you and I think, as we're socially distant, to develop the ability to rest and to pray, but not to pray from a place of anxiety. Oh God, you need to. Oh God, what about? Oh God, oh God. But to pray from a place of peace. I like the way the psalmist put it in Psalm 131. Let me read that to you. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great or too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. So I have to ask, how's your soul? Is it anxious and troubled about many things? Is it distracted or is it quiet like a weaned child with its mother? I want to pray for you and for me that today will be a day of rest, a day of peace, a day of certainly intercession and falling on our face before God, but doing so from a position of rest and quiet. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you're big enough to handle anything we deal with. None of this has caught you by surprise. And we affirm again our trust in you, that you're on the throne, that you know what you're doing. And so I pray for my brothers, my sisters, and for me, that we would quiet our souls, that we would be at rest, that we wouldn't be distracted, anxious, or troubled about many things. Help us to seek you first today, to let tomorrow's worries deal with himself tomorrow because today's enough. And so I bless us to be at peace and to walk with you and to love our family and our communities while we're in this crisis. And I bless you that you know what you're doing. And I thank you for your faithfulness. Today we lean on your faithfulness. In the name of our coming King, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I'm telling my soul, calm down, get quiet, let's trust.